Welcome, I'm Katie Connor and this is Studio 22. Today we are celebrating Halloween a little early. Joining us today is Becca Young, a senior econ and finance major at Oklahoma City University, who is going to share her tips and tricks for creating a Halloween look that will have you asking yourself if I only had a brain. We'll be right back after these quick messages. You're watching Studio 22. Welcome back to Studio 22. I'm Katie Connor and I'm joined with Becca Young, a senior econ and finance major at Oklahoma City University, who later is going to show us some how to's on a Halloween style to get you in the season. So Becca, you are an econ and finance major, but somehow you have gotten into dance and makeup. How did that happen for you? Basically, I grew up dancing my whole life. I was kind of forced into it, but ended up really, really liking it. So it's something that like, I couldn't imagine not doing and then along with makeup I watched my mom do it every day in the mirror it was like something I always wanted to do but as of recently I got into doing it on other people and it's just become really fun and I'm not perfect at it yet but I know with practice I'll do I'll be better <laughs> oh no I I think it took me 30 years to even try to figure this out so yeah. I completely understand yeah. what you mean I still by need that. help sometimes with my face too. <laughs> yes it took me a very long time and thank God for our generation and YouTube yeah. because otherwise I would be struggling extremely hard. So you can find anything on YouTube for sure. Exactly. So where do you, would you like to kind of keep this always as like a hobby or do it always on the side? Definitely a hobby. I could not see myself like doing it professionally at all. I think I just like doing it just for fun and as a creative outlet. Okay. That, that, hey, I understand that too. Mm -hmm. I tear down walls and houses and redo houses as my creative outlet. So <laughs> mine's, mine's a little bit of bigger stretch, but it that is, you, you definitely have a, a, a fine skill talent. Um, really quick, what, uh, you, sorry, what, what is your like top three favorite things about doing makeup? I think, okay, I feel like there's a common stigma with makeup. Like if you put it on, then you don't feel like you're putting it on to mask something like you don't feel confident with being natural or like not having makeup on. But I think my favorite thing about doing makeup, especially my own face, is that it enhances your beauty. Okay. So I think the top three things would just be, it gives me confidence and enhancement. That and it's sounds fun. fantastic. And we'll be right back after this break for the look. Coach Overton drawing up the play. Looks like he's calling for the Keep Oklahoma Beautiful play. Galindo from way downtown, where recycling is also available. Alexis picks up the loose trash, but wait, that's not trash. She recycles the paper. Stars on the fast break, Galindo to Hill, down to LaCour for the easy lay-in, and even easier to recycle. When we keep Oklahoma beautiful, everybody wins. I was looking for a way to help out with my community while also getting close with my gal pals. I've been looking for an addition in my life that can make things more lively. I wanted a companion to curl up with at night. That's why we adopted these guys. Research shows that women love cute little things. So what's wrong with you? Get a guy who's guaranteed to stay. The 
Stars in retreat. The shot goes up. Devasane comes out of nowhere and another block for OCU. This guy's on fire. This kid owns OCU's record in blocks not only on the court, but off the court as well. Earlier today, he was busy crashing the boards. Just a rebounding machine. Even cleaning up the glass, giving a whole new meaning to garbage time. Yamasane, MVP on the court and keeping Oklahoma beautiful off the court. Oklahoma isn't your room. So don't trash it. Don't forget to tune in next week with host Caleb Mudd. Joining him is J.R. Gray, who will be discussing the socioeconomic effect on, on America as Taco Bell removes multiple items off of their value menu. Hi, and welcome back to the studio. Again, I'm Katie Connor, joined with Becca and our model, Monica. We're going to learn how to do a scarecrow effect for the Halloween season. So, Becca, what are kind of the first things that you always try to start off with um, when you're starting a makeup look? Okay, so the first things that I like to start off with would be, okay, if I'm doing like a full face, she already has foundation on, so it's okay if her hair is like kind of in her face, especially for the look. So I'm going to start with her hair, and I'm going to put them in just two pigtails for the scarecrow look. Okay. I normally would do French braids, but I think it would be cuter just with the normal French strand braids. <laughs> Keep it a little straw-y kind of effects yeah. going. I get it. Now, do you, do you do anything special when you're putting the foundation on? Do you, like, use a brush or a blender ball? Or? Um, I use a Real Technique sponge, which is my favorite, or a beauty blender because they have a lot of bounce. Okay. Like, they're not hard or... Like, if you have a hard sponge, then it'll, like, get really splotchy and it'll look bad. So you definitely recommend, like, getting the, the ball wet before? Yes, definitely okay. wet and then squeezing it until it's damp and then you can go ahead and apply the foundation directly on um, the sponge and then to your face. Okay. Which is, yeah, it's definitely my favorite technique for sure. So the big question I've, I've seen a bunch of things on this one is how do you clean your blender ball afterwards? So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know some people that don't do that either. They just get like new ones every once in a while. Um, I, that's what I do. I, there's like a bunch of, uh, what was the other good day? There's a bunch of like the little, tools that you can get mm -hmm. to clean it but like I've never used one that actually works it just is still brown and my foundation is literally brown yeah so like it doesn't it doesn't really come out so I just get a new one and that they're not was, expensive so it's really not that big of a deal that makes total sense I was told one time to put it in a washing machine with yeah. the clothes but it still didn't work either I feel like so, that'd get all over your clothes yeah so that's I've always I always try to see those little little things because everyone's always asking how to you know, how do you make those products last longer? Right. Because some of them can get really expensive. Yeah, definitely. I think the Real Technique ones from Walgreens is a good dupe for the Beauty Blender. That's like $20, which is ridiculous. But. <laughs> okay, then next, since I have her hair in two pigtails, I parted it down the center. And then I'm just going to fluff them out just to give her like that scrappy look of what a scarecrow would have. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. 
Are you going with like a Wizard of Oz feel or are we going kind of scary movie feel today? Honestly, it's not going to be too scary. It's just going to be like more of a Wizard of Oz oh, feel. Oh, fun. But okay, those are a little better anyway. Okay, there's one side. Wizard of Oz is always a little more fun. It is. <laughs> I feel like I can quote too much that blood movie. and gore all the time. Yeah, I don't even know how to do like <laughs> special effects makeup like that. That'd be so cool to learn. Okay. That'd be super Almost intense done. though. I can see that happening. I know. There's this girl called Glamagore on YouTube who is like Probably insane. super crazy. Like she uh, can completely transform herself. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Okay. So now that I have both of the pigtails done, I'm just going to go ahead and sit down. And she already has foundation on, like I said. And then I'm going to start with eyeliner and I'm just using the Revlon Color Stay. It's just a liquid eyeliner thing that you would normally use for like winged eyeliner. And I'm just gonna, from the corners of her mouth, I'm just gonna put two lines. I see you got, you're doing kind of like little sections at a time. Do you think that's better for you to get a like a straight line? Yeah, I think it's easier for me to get a straight line because, first of all, I'm just like kind of shaky right now in general. You are totally fine. <laughs> so, it's just easier to do that. That makes sense. It definitely comes out a lot crisper from what I can see over here as opposed to just trying to do one straight line. Yeah. I feel like, to me, I feel like I would end up doing that like, you do the, like, the oops when someone bumps you while you're trying to put lipstick on. Yes. That's what I feel like it would look like. You just get this, this crazy jagged, line. yes. Yeah, no. That, no that's always that. entertaining and fun. Sorry, I'm like all up in your face. Or you can look like that three-year-old that stole mom's makeup and has now just put lipstick from like chin to nose, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the little strokes is a little bit easier. Just in general. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect initially because I'm gonna draw X's over anyways. So I'll get to that part. <laughs> Good little hiding techniques for it. Yeah. Because I, I know. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> okay, then I'm just gonna put X's like barbed wire or like straw in the lines. So like the center of the X should be on the line. And what I like about what you're doing is you're using just kind of everyday things. You don't have to go get fancy Halloween makeup or anything. Yeah, no, like definitely that. not. Like I'm, I love Halloween for sure. It's like I think it's my favorite holiday aside from Christmas. But I'm not gonna like go out and like get stuff that I wouldn't use every day. No, that makes sense because then of course it would dry out over the season. Mm. And how often do you really use it? So. Yes, for sure. I'm just gonna go over it again. So it's a little bit thicker. Again, they don't have to look perfect because she's literally a scarecrow. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> okay, that looks good so far. No, that makes perfect sense. That's definitely a great way to keep it easy going and not so many problems in the long run. Okay. Well, Becca's gonna sit here and continue to work on our scarecrow look for today, but we are gonna take a quick break. So please stay tuned and we'll see you soon.
Welcome back to Studio 22. Again, I'm Katie Connor, Katie Connor, excuse me, joined with Becca and our model Monica, who has been working on a scarecrow look for this Halloween season. So Becca, you've kind of been working through the break. Um, what exactly have you just done over the, the commercial break here? Okay, so I just finished out the X's on the corners of her mouth, and then I took my Wet n Wild multi-stick. I can't read what shade it's in anymore. <laughs> Um, and I just put that on the center of her nose and it doesn't look like it makes sense right now But I'm gonna add the same like black barbed wire effect that's on her cheeks But on her I'm gonna add it on her nose as well. Oh, so kind of like going around the circle like mm -hmm. highlighting. Okay, that makes sense Yes, I'm just gonna make the circle a little bit bigger and I chose a glittery one because I first of all I just like glitter in general <laughs> and I think it can be like a like a glamour scarecrow instead of like an actual scary one okay okay kind of fancy it up a little bit yeah. not get so strange okay <laughs> okay fancy stringy that's what we're going for today basically because <laughs> i mean everyone i like to look cute on halloween yeah. i don't like to look crazy i feel like there's two spectrums of people <laughs> that like go crazy they either cover but, themselves in blood or you try to look a little fancy and fun yeah yeah okay then i'm just gonna put little black lines around the dot that i made on her nose now, is this a look that you have done before or no. is this kind of your, this is your idea for, I guess, this year? Yeah, this is not a look I've done before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of trying out a bunch of Halloween looks so I know what I want to do this year, but we'll see. And is that what you typically do every year is just kind of try different looks, see what you like, and then... Yes. Figure out which one was your favorite? Basically, yeah. How do you decide which one's your favorite? Is it like the easiest makeup, the most fun makeup to do? Honestly, whichever one makes me feel... The best. The best. Yeah. The, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, then I'm going to take this MAC blush and I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of her nose so it's not as gold. I'm going to use my finger. Sorry. Actually, no, I'd screw that. I do the same thing. Sometimes I think your hand is the best tool minus <laughs> the brush because you just can't get it to do exactly what you want it to do sometimes. I know it's hard because I only use my fingers for so long with my makeup and then they came out with all these fancy brushes and I was like, okay, wait. <laughs> you had to reteach yourself how to do makeup again? Literally. Okay, so I'm going to do like pink on her nose like that and then I'm just going to do a really dramatic blush, like little circles mm -hmm. on her cheeks to match her nose. Get those res rosy cheeks going for today. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna go to the apple or like this part of her face. So just that hard like cheekbone right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. The one that always seems to get bumped and with, without any, any warning. Basically. Okay. And you can make it as dramatic as you want, but I think obviously for Halloween, I'm going to make it a little crazy because obviously I wouldn't go outside normally with my blush like this. Okay, so that kind of matches the nose a little bit. Then onto basically the last part of her face. I'm going to take black in my Naked 2 palette, I think. And I'm just going to like make a little uh, triangle on her forehead so it'll be like a patch like Scarecrows have. And you literally want it to look patchy because she's a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, no, it, so for this, I've actually not like the unclean look is actually better right. like than you, going for clean. Like you don't need perfect lines. You don't need anything like that. I think that's why this look is fun because like you don't have to be amazing at makeup to do it. So I'm just going to do a little triangle and I'm going to blur out the edges a little bit. And then I'm going to add like kind of a grid on her head. <laughs> I'll show you with the same eyeliner that I use for her mouth. Kind of like that, that stitch pattern yes. kind of deal that you see. Cause scarecrows always reminded me of like quilting. Basically, yeah. So I'm just gonna make diagonal lines across the little like triangle that I made. Again, they don't have to be perfect. And I'm just gonna drag them this time instead of using the technique that I used on her mouth mm -hmm. just cause there's already black underneath it. 
helping give that rougher edge kind of look going. Definitely. And I'm just going to cross it. And this is really interesting because I've never seen um, kind of a design go with this one. Like you always see the rosy cheeks and those types of things, but everybody wants to make the eyeballs big, big triangles, you know? Right. I thought this would just be fun just to show like, you know, in the Wizard of Oz, he has little patches and there's like stuffing mm -hmm. coming out. And then I'm going to add the little X's that I had on her mouth, like um, where the lines intersect. Where the lines intersect. Just random little X's everywhere, giving yeah. it that extra patchy look. Yes. Almost done. Monica's going to have a fun time walking around afterwards. <laughs> That's okay. She's just getting in the spirit early. It's totally fine. <laughs> okay. So Becca is going to continue and we're going to finish up this look when we come back from break. So stay tuned at Studio 21. 22. <laughs> I was looking for a way to help out with my community while also getting close with my gal pals. I've been looking for an addition in my life that can make things more lively. I wanted a companion to curl up with at night. That's why we adopted these guys. Research shows that women love cute little things. So what's wrong with you? Get a guy who's guaranteed to stay. Coach Overton drawing up the play. Looks like he's calling for the Keep Oklahoma Beautiful play. Galindo from way downtown, where recycling is also available. Alexis picks up the loose trash, but wait, that's not trash. She recycles the paper. Stars on the fast break, Galindo to Hill, down to LaCour for the easy lay-in, and even easier to recycle. When we keep Oklahoma beautiful, everybody wins. I don't work a nine to five, but I have a job to do. I don't wear a tie, but I still wear a suit in my court. My field of work is an average, and my time around the water cooler is limited. I work overtime, but the payoff is worth it. I don't work a nine to five, but I have a job to do. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. Hey, Oklahoma, do your part and help. Keep Oklahoma beautiful. This is our land. This is our pride. Our roadways that we travel, our lakes and parks that we love, our businesses that we build, our communities that we create. And that's why littering is not okay. This is Oklahoma, our land, our pride, and we must take care of it. So do your part and help. Keep Oklahoma beautiful. Welcome back into Studio 22. Again, I am Katie Connor, joined with Becca and our lovely scarecrow, Monica here. We are just finishing up the look. So Becca, what exactly left do we, uh, do we have? Okay, so as you can see, I started her lipstick a little bit. Um, I'm gonna use this Fenty Beauty. Um, it's my favorite, I love Fenty Beauty so much. <laughs> um, and just to brighten up the look a little bit, and then I'll do some black lines around her lips to tie it all together, and then that's basically it. Oh, wow. And then we'll show off her outfit. So are you more of a, a matte lip gloss person, I'm sorry, lipstick person? Do we like shiny or does it kind of just depend on the occasion? It really depends. Like sometimes I really like a high gloss. Sometimes I just wear chapstick. <laughs> it um, is that season for just chapstick. <laughs> seriously, and in the winter, like, can you just like open your mouth a little bit more? And in the winter, it gets, everything gets super dry, so I don't like to wear and use matte. Mm -hmm. Because I hate the feeling of crusty lips. I can completely <laughs> understand that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. And just go like this. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then this will dry kind of matte. Right? And I'm going to take the same eyeliner that I had for literally her, 
her whole face. And I'm just going to do black lines around her mouth. Now, when you do the eyeliners, do you prefer brushes, felts? Definitely a felt. Felt? Yeah. I don't like... Um, not like the felt tip pens, though. The ones that you have to dip in mm -hmm. to get more uh, product on it. That makes sense. Do you think it just gives you a cleaner line? Yes, and it doesn't run out as easy. Like, I feel like I have to go get a new one every time. <laughs> that I is definitely like helpful when it comes to buying makeup, because I think as females, we all know how expensive it can get. Yeah, no, makeup is, is crazy expensive, that's for sure. That makes complete sense. Okay. So, so after this, we will be back and we will see the completed look with outfit completed. What is MassCom at OCU? It's working on a breaking story. It's creating ad campaigns for real clients. It's training in public relations. It's an internship downtown. It's not a lecture hall with 200 students. It's not waiting to meet with your professor. It's knowing everyone's name. It's winning awards and honors. And it's reporting live from Oklahoma City. Find out what it is for you at okcu.edu. Welcome back to Studio 22. Again, I'm Katie Connor, joined with Becca and our amazing Scarecrow uh, model, Monica. So, Becca, we, we now have the completed face. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about the outfit as well? Yeah, okay. So, basically, we just went ahead and threw on a beanie, but you can do a straw hat if you want. Um, obviously, the pigtails. And then, if you have any sort of flannel at home, then just throw it on under some overalls or any sort of denim look. And we're going to have her stand really fast, but that's okay. Oh, that's just perfect. so you can see the whole completed look. I think it's a cute, glamour scarecrow that I think everyone could find in their closet for the most part. No, that makes total sense. And then would you throw like some straw in there yeah. too to help if you have some? Like in her pockets, maybe like in her shirt or like <laughs> in this front pocket right here. It just on it or behind her ear, just kind of wherever you want it. You could make it your own for sure. I like this because this is really helpful for, this isn't a ex super expensive costume, mm -hmm. so you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money to look good for Halloween. Right, because Halloween costumes can get crazy expensive, obviously just because the demand of Halloween, but um, I think you could go to like your local Goodwill and get all of these things and be perfectly fine and feel fabulous on Halloween. Which, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, Becca, thank you so much for teaching us how to do an economic scarecrow. <laughs> Monica, thank you for being our lovely model today. Yay. And we will again see you next week with Caleb Mudd who is going to be joined with J.R. Gray. Join us next week at Studio 22.